We will start this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Entrepreneurs in Quarantine. Uh, I'm here with Katie. Katie, I learned about you through the Suburban. Chelsea St. Pierre did a great piece on you. And I thought to myself, who is this incredible entrepreneur, literally in quarantine, <laughs> making masks, medical equipment, anything you could make for frontline workers? Katie, thank you so much for joining me. Who are you and what do you do, ma'am? All right. So a little quick backstory. I was in the process of opening uh, a nonprofit makerspace, basically a community workshop where people can come in, use our tools, learn how to use different tools and have a space where they can make the things they want to make. Uh, as soon as this COVID epidemic hit, we had to put all of that on hold. But I had a few pieces of equipment at home and a few connections. And I was able to get um, five uh, 3D printers lent to me so that I could be making um, visors for frontline workers. That's so amazing. So you, the makerspace, just to be clear, the makerspace wasn't set up for medical masks or medical equipment. Um, this was a makeshift pivot that you did in response to COVID, right? Absolutely. So basically the idea of a makerspace is it's just a place where people who enjoy making things can come in and do that, or we can do prototyping for, for entrepreneurs. And uh, doing the masks was a friend of mine is a doctor at a CHSLD, and she needed something. She was absolutely desperate for equipment. She was about to figure out how to wear a report folder to protect her face and then realized, oh, yeah, you've got 3D printers. Can you make something for me? So I did. And while researching that, I realized that there's a lot of people who need these. So collected as many printers as I could and then as many volunteers as I could. And we've now sent uh, 446 of them out to date. That's incredible. So obviously you are not um, this is a nonprofit. You are not profiting from these masks. We'll get into how you're financing uh, this in a second, but uh, um, you're literally printing these masks. And, and somebody who, as an attorney, um, I see clients and contacts on both sides of the supply chain. The people who are making them in China, Canada, and elsewhere, and the people that need them so badly that are willing to pay a premium. Could you walk us through a little bit about what is the equipment that's so high in demand during the COVID area? Our advisors, which um, actually I can pull one up right now. Um, so this this is the headband portion of it, and it gets a clear sheet on the front to produce uh, a barrier between the doctor and the patient. It means okay. that the doctor can wear their mask for longer, and if their patient coughs or sneezes, they're not getting any of that spray in their face. Okay, and in terms of is that the only um, product that you're making? Are you making the um, the mouth masks as well? So we're not making face masks. I do have a couple of contacts who are making those um, fabric face masks. But what, what we are doing is appealing to the community. So anybody who's got uh, a workshop at home or a small business and has a box of masks or a box of gloves, even if it's just a half-filled box, we're, we're taking those as donations and redistributing them to the care homes who are so desperately in need of these. That's incredible. So you're actually doing distribution, not only for your own manufacturing facility in your basement, uh, we're, we're going to get the tour in just a sec, but you're actually acting as a hub um, to get other like-minded people, um, uh, benevol benevolent people, to get their product out to the people that need it most. Absolutely. Amazing. So, yeah, I've recruited uh, a really amazing team of volunteers. I've got people who are willing to drive all over the island of Montreal to make deliveries or to do pickups. And I have uh, a team of people with 3D printers who are helping with production and another team with uh, like cricket cutter machines who are helping to cut the, the clear portion of the visors. So and then could you give us, could you give us a, um, could you give us a tour? This is like kind of like the show how it's made. Could you give us a tour and show us the, the big manufacturing facility that you uh, that you oversee? All right. Uh... And I and I know that when we spoke yesterday, I know that you you're literally running 
like three shifts, like <laughs> as if you were unionized because you're trying to produce them as fast as you can. You're in bed at 12, you're up at two, you're heating up the printer. Unbelievable. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this. Yep. This is my, uh, That's my collection of 3D printers. Here, I'll just do a close-up, one of them in action. Nice. So this one's printing a visor right now. Wow. And so how long how long will it take to make that visor? Right. So these particular ones take just under two hours to make. So I've got five machines that are currently working. I have one that's unfortunately broken down. So every two hours, I have five plus... Wow. Whatever uh, my my volunteers are supplying as well. So. That's incredible. So, wh what, what is the walk us through a partnership, or somebody calls in with a need? So, for example, a hospital or a CHSLD, they call and they say, "Look, you know, we need masks, or you identify." Identify. Walk us through walk us who through you're speaking with, you're speaking with, and how and you go how about you fitting about the frontline workers for these masks, workers, and how do you finance them? All right. So. I'll start with your last question first. We're entirely financed by donations. And at this point, we're very happy to say that we are running absolutely flush. So we have received donations that match or slightly exceed what we've spent. And whatever is exceeding, we are going to invest in additional machinery so we can increase our production. Incredible. Um, sorry, <laughs> catching my breath from that walk up the stairs. <laughs> 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 it's early. Yeah, it's it is early. early. Um, in terms of people ordering from us or making requests, so we have done a couple of partnerships recently. Uh, one of them is with the Centre de Ressources Communautaires de West de Lille, so the West Island CRC, and they have put a call out to all of the long-term care homes on the West Island to say that we have these things available and who needs them. And wow. from that, yeah, from there, uh, we are receiving calls and uh, and emails. We have a website set up where people can put an order in. And usually we're able to get uh, 25 or so uh, kits out to each of these facilities within a day or two of their request. Incredible. Now, what happens um, when this is all over, when COVID no longer is around, when we beat the virus? What happens to your high tech facility and where do you where do you go from here? So unfortunately, I say bye bye to all those printers that were lent to me by uh, Lower Canada College and Collège de Montréal. I'll miss them because they're really fun to have around. And <laughs> we'll stop on them. But uh, no, I'll send those back to um, to the colleges or sorry, to the high schools where they where they came from. But I will be opening up a uh, makerspace on the West Island. So. Uh, the That's idea there is we'll have a uh, 3D printer, uh, laser cutter, uh, sewing area, and a woodworking area where people can come in and learn and build and meet other people who are doing these sorts of things. Now, has this experience um, accelerated your understanding of what a makerspace can be? Or, or was this a distraction from you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur? How do you... Uh, what lessons have you drawn during COVID that you think you'll bring with you? I have met so many amazing people doing this. I think one of the things I'm enjoying the most is I've set up a group chat with all the people who are doing the 3D printing with me. And I'm realizing that there is a big community out there of people who really enjoy this sort of thing. And I've, it's more uh, solidifying my my feeling that there is a need for this out here on the West Island. And People will enjoy it. Unreal. Unreal. Look, that's an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I'd, I'd love to hang out after this is done before you give back the printer because I want to print a visor. That looks like a lot of fun. All right. Um, actually, one thing that I have done with my son, we're putting together a quick uh, video that we'll be posting on our website of the full process on how the visor is made from downloading the files on the Internet to printing it, to cutting the clear part on the vinyl cutter. So a whole step-by-step -step video that will be available, hopefully in the next couple of days if I get a break from actually putting together kids' advisors. <laughs> Sounds like a great activity to do with kids. My kids may be a little too young for that, but 
Um, maybe when they get older, well, we, we can come by. Um, I'm going to make sure that people, everyone has access to your information. Everyone knows where to find you because, I mean, this is such an important initiative. I commend you, uh, Katie, and um, I, I, I can't wait to touch base with you at the Makerspace. Anything I can do to lend a hand is going to be my pleasure. Well, thank you. Uh, can I just add one thing? Of course. Uh, coming from the community, if anybody has boxes of gloves or N95 masks that they can donate, um, I think that, Jamie, I can count on you to post our, our website. Absolutely. Best place to reach us and let us know what you have to donate. And we have drivers available who can come pick it up from you. So Amazing. even... We will move for half a box of gloves or half a box of masks because that's how badly these places need them. Such an important message. Thank you so much, Katie. I'm going to make sure the message gets out there. Keep doing what you do. Um, and I, I love the hustle. You are really the definition, the embodiment of an entrepreneur in quarantine doing what you do for the community. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And uh, Thank you. It was great talking to you. Bye -bye. Thanks so much.